fabulous film, but it's quite a horrible subject. It's about a family, and they live uh, on a housing estate, and uh, for one reason or another, you don't need to go into any great detail about it, they're uh, very, very unpopular, and their neighbours don't like them, and they kind of laid siege to their house, and they try to get rid of them. It's very tragic, really, but uh, we'll, we'll have a look at it anyway. Oh, first question, first question. Can you identify this sound? Is it a drum? Cattle drum? Timpani? Or is it a synth noise? What is it? No, it is but one thing. It's the unmistakable sound of that woman's breasts. <laughs> and what we have now is some of the locals on the estate talking about that woman's breasts. This used to be quite a nice area until it came and it went down in the afternoons. They've been passed from one person to the next. And nobody will do anything. Nobody seems to want to do anything. Megan, uh, then would you wish them to live next door to you? Or would anybody else for that matter? And you can't even go to the shop. They're following you. Chasing the beans. Blood there are people round about here that won't go through legal channels. They'll take it into their own hands and it's something I don't want. Well, they all want put away. They do the whole family. Well, surely there must be somewhere they can put them that there's people of their own kind who are more capable of putting up with what they do with handling it. You're going to have to just stay inside. Come please. I'm getting somebody from one side to come down here and we'll try and resolve. Policeman here, right? Go to Hendon Police Training College, teach you one thing, at all times, polite. Here he comes. Look at the house he's going into. Have I got to go in there, really? Oh, well, at least I can do is wipe my feet. In the short term, we have a responsibility, which we as a responsible council are fulfilling. Now, the other things that's happened, as you can see, is their glass has all been smashed. Now, can you mind, please, the camera crew said the police are in, We'd like to have a private chat. We don't want anyone eavesdropping on our conversation with the police. I don't worry, I'll pull this bit of curtain over. There you go. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Daddy. Smile for Daddy. Smile for Daddy. That's the family pet. You hear what she was saying there? Look. Look. Smile for Daddy. Smile for Daddy. Do your party piece. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Daddy. Give me a party. Come on, Daddy. Give me a party piece. That's his party piece. That's his little trick he does when people come round. He chews the window sill. Like that. <laughs> Years of training. Barbara Woodhouse. I don't think so, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't. <laughs> now, <clears throat> another character. Another character lives on this estate. See this man here? Did any of you ever see the uh, very, very uh, famous film? A film that I don't want to boast, but I did have a hand in writing, producing and directing it. Uh, JFK with Kevin Costner. <laughs> Kevin phoned me up, said, I think it's a brilliant film. You're the only man for it. I said, Kev, would love to, busy. You know what it's like. Kate Moss, oh, I don't want you flying over to America again. I said, you must play the part of Jim Garrison, who was the, the lawyer in, uh, I think, in Texas, in America. The lone voice after the Kennedy assassination who was saying, Lee Harvey Oswald, on his own? No. More has gone on. Now, Jim's health has suffered a little bit. Got a bit of a paunch, and he's moved to the northeast of England, and he's living up there. But he still holds firm to his ideals. Hello. This Hello. is his Hello. wife. No, no, it's a great one to see you. Having a chat with a man from the council. Morning. Morning. I mean, why haven't you done something before this? Particularly? Well, I'm not prepared to say anything in front of the cameras. Well, that's what. I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. You never see anything, you never tell us anything. You see, simple as that. She said to the man from the council, what's going on? And he said, quite openly, I'm not prepared to say anything in front of the cameras. I'm not authorised by the council to make a statement on television. It's wrong of you to ask me. If you send me a letter, then you'll get your reply. Good enough for you and me? Maybe. Not good enough for Jim Garrison. He can smell a conspiracy. She cover up. See? <laughs> Cover up. It's a wonderful estate. You've got to wind them up. This man's the, great. The bait. That's what's, that's what's happening. they have got to live somewhere. They've been to three different places. They've got to live somewhere. Well, right? you live in the street where I live. Street 
it. Now, he's a very nice man, uh, and he's saying, come on, give them a chance. They've got to live somewhere. You can hear what he's saying because he's speaking English. You see there? Norway. Norway World Cup. Because he is, of course, Norwegian. And when he's wound up, which he is now with this woman, for her total lack of tolerance, he starts talking Norwegian again. Well, you didn't need a tag, can you? Because you were effing and seeing there yesterday. It was beautiful. And I hoard you. I hoard you. And I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm not ranked. I'm there. I'm not. You were starting to say whore there, and you were doing it. And she was doing the same me. I tell you what, dears. You not in that block there. I rather like me. You rather like. And she is sitting there, no, I'm nasty, no, no, I'm nasty. She's going, no, English, English, parlez-vous anglaise, Englishy, Englishy. We'll all stick together. Back with the family. If one gets hurt, we'll all get hurt. Chap here, see him, son of the family, sitting there thinking, well, there's our cameras around everywhere, like. Perhaps they'll spot me for your movies and that. <laughs> Brad Pitt, can he live forever? <laughs> Still, they're probably looking for a hard man. I wonder if there's any way I could show them how hard I am. And so completely, apropos of nothing, he decides to show you his scar. Don't fight, but don't fight. No reason for that at all, just... Uh, <laughs> Well, have a look at my scar. We've all done it. You've walked through Sainsbury's one day and said, excuse me, missus, yeah, have a look at my appendix scar. You'll love this. Back we've to Jim Garrison. Everywhere. We've got to keep trying. We'll try for ten we'll months. Try. We'll be yeah, trying, we'll try. my land. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jim Garrison has got another thing, right? He's getting very old and his brain, how can I say this politely? His brain scrambled, okay? Jim has heard two phrases in his life that apply to this situation. This is the man who's saying, come on, be more tolerant. And the two phrases are this. Hey, come on, you don't live around here. You be here when the shit hits the fan. And the other phrase is, it's no good trying to be nice to these people. It's just like pissing against the wind. When the shit hits the fan, it's like pissing against the wind. <laughs> We'll try for ten months. We'll be trying, my man. I have strokes. Look at this.